Hey everyone, today we're going to be expanding the intrusion alarm security system to another building. Now, let me show you what that building is exactly. The security system so far is only in this main garage building that I am standing in right now. This has a DSC Neo security system in it. Here is our keypad. Our panel is in a separate closed off room for better security. And this is only doing this room, or this building. We've got a door contact on the garage door, door contact on the man door, door contact on the window, and a motion sensor, and that is it. Now, I, don't, I wasn't even gonna do this project, but this is partly because, well, I guess it gives me content, and it'll maybe make you everybody shut up and stop telling me what to do because it's bugging me that I'm constantly getting told to do the same thing, which I'm not really worried about, not really concerned about it, but I guess I'll do it. Um, that is, if we go outside here, this generator building here that is stood beside the main building does not have security to it. It has power and it has fire alarm but no intrusion alarm. That is because I'm not really, not really that worried about it. It's not gonna be the most secure building ever. It has a Schlag Everest lock on it, but the generator is not exactly that easy to steal. So they have to get into the building somehow and then wrestle with this 220 pound generator to get it out of here, which isn't exactly stealthy or quiet. But I guess I could expand the security system. Now, everybody has been recommending putting a door contact on this door, which I will do. And sure, that's fine with me. But there actually is part of it that I am excited to do. Let me show you what that is. I'm not going to lock this. So, I'll show you what we're going to do here. We do have our door contact, so I will put a door contact on. So... The, gener or the main building here has to be disarmed in order to get into the generator building. But I'm also gonna put another siren because this siren that I have installed in here isn't very loud. It's not actually a siren, it's actually a speaker and there's a voice amplifier that will set it off. Let me show you guys here. Uh, that's not it. How can I do this here? Might be able to just take that jumper off. No, apparently not. I thought maybe it was like a normally open, normally closed thing. Um, it's a pain to do the security, so I'll just do the fire message. It does like a security message. So I know, I know this is fire message, fire. but I'm just, fire. I'm just trying to give you guys. Okay. I know this is fire message. I'm just trying to give you guys a good idea for how loud it is, fire. which it is. Fire. It's plenty loud inside. It's loud inside, but it's not that loud outside. So, I know, once again, I know it's fire, not intrusion alarm. I'm just trying to give you guys an idea fire. that fire. it's loud inside, but it's not that loud outside. Which I want it to be not loud outside, but loud there. Fire. So my point here is, is it's loud, but it's not loud enough outside. So I want to put another speaker outside 
And since they're not really rated for outside, I'm gonna put it inside the generator building, which should increase loudness out there because it's overall more power. This will be a 15 watt speaker and the one in here is a 20 watt, so it'll be nearly as loud. So basically almost double, double the power and the generator building is not nearly as well insulated as this garage. So the sound should get out of it a lot better, a lot more clear. So this speaker here, we're gonna have to modify because this isn't actually a speaker. This is a normal siren that you just give it 12 volts power. And this little board is a little audio amplifier that plays a tone to the speaker. We're gonna completely bypass that board and wire these two wires from the speaker directly up to the audio output from the amplifier, which is this little card inside the security panel. Hopefully that makes sense. So we have to run at least four wires out there, two for alarm contact and two for speaker. So the plan for getting that wire out there is we have a four conductor. This is labeled fire alarm, which this runs from the security panel. I'm basically using what's existing here to use it to my advantage. This is existing. This is going from the security panel. It makes its way blah, 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 through the walls, through the ceiling. And it, end up, and it ends up down here in our fire alarm panel. However, it hasn't ever been connected to anything, so it's not necessary. It was ran there just as a spare thing. But as the security system isn't monitored, if the security system was monitored, that would be the only purpose of it. But I get notifications if the fire alarms go off in, in other ways through security cameras. They will give me a notification of fire alarm. So I don't, I'm not worried about it. I don't need it. So I'm going to pull this out of here, run it somewhere differently. Actually, that looks like it might be it right there running through the ceiling. Yeah, because one runs to this door contact, one runs to the fire alarm. So I'm not gonna need this so I can run that. I'm thinking over and actually I might be able to just splice onto it like literally right here and run a wire out there because I need to get a wire out to that building. Now keep in mind this is intrusion alarm, it's non-life safety or power, so it doesn't have to be put in conduits and protected the same way fire alarm or life safety or any power does. It does, it's not quite that strict. And we're also not allowed to run the security in the fire alarm, so anyone suggesting run it through there, I did think about it, but like for one, we're not really supposed to run it with fire alarm. And it's getting so busy through that hole that goes through the wall with actual fire alarm. I don't want to touch it. I don't want to look at it, think about it, see it, or do anything to it. So I'm going to come down with this. Maybe I'll, I'll have to make a splice run along the floor. And I actually am able to run out here through the bottom of the door because there's a little, little gap. That you can kind of snake things through here in the bottom of the door, which I may have sealed that up. So I may have to re-drill a hole and then I should be able to run it along and sort of down this gap of the side of the slab. And then I might be able to just come up and then run it in with this power pipe right there. I know it kind of sounds like a lot, but we'll get it done. So this won't be the nicest looking thing, but we'll have to make a splice here. So we'll strip off that guy. That should be all the room we need. And for wire to run outside, I figured the best thing I have that is four conductor or larger and isn't like a freaking tech cable. I mean, I could run some like 12 gauge tech out there, but that'd be pretty damn overkill. So this is still a little bit overkill as it's an 18 gauge. It's a little bigger than you need and it's an eight conductor. This is wire that I commonly use for underground fire alarm because it is water resistant, it's weather rated stuff. So this is perfect for this application. And the rest of the colors are gonna get chopped. This 
so then these can splice up right here. Just to make it look a little bit nicer, I'm gonna wrap it all up in some tape. I'm gonna use some white electrical tape just so it blends in with the wall a little bit better. Well, it doesn't look good, but it looks slightly less bad. Where's my door wedge? Alright, now can we get this wire to go through this hole? I remember this isn't the easiest thing ever, but you can get it through. Place my phone down there. So there we slip through right there. Can you really can't really even see light through there. Poke through the foam and poked out down here. Alright, tuck that in right there. That doesn't look too terrible actually at all. Alright, what are we going to do now? This might be the most unimpressive trench you've ever seen me dig, but... Okay, I think I got it. Yes, I did. So that's sticking up through there. Just gotta pull the slack out. Okay. Let's 
try and hide it. Somewhere. All right, it looks like crap over here with these cracked patio stones, but it's kind of annoying to be honest. I'm not happy with it at all. Okay, now we've just got to staple it up the wall in here. Okay, so our main wire runs up, runs up to here, and I'm going to mount the siren on the ceiling right here, and I'm also gonna use the siren mounted there as a junction box, so I'm gonna split off to a two wire only, and that two wire runs down over to this other side of the door where I'll mount my door contact. So let's get these. So I'll mount it screw facing this way, the door and the generator building's this way, so screw that way. That seems easiest to access. So then that would put the screw on that, that way. So if I knocked out this little knockout thing right there, we might be able to bring in the wires through there. Maybe. I don't really like that idea though. So we're just gonna come through that knockout there and figure out something somehow. Fine with the rip cord and these brown wire here. They always break, they never cooperate with you. So I'm not even bothering. And a yellow and green can splice right up to the white and black from there to go to our door contact. So polarity doesn't really matter on this, it's just a door contact. These will go to the siren, which in here, looking at the siren, we can chop these wires off, leave a little bit of length, should I want to connect them back up to that board there. Since I have no indication of polarity, if it is wrong and doesn't work, I will switch it back at the panel. Switch it back at the panels afterwards if it doesn't work which it may very well not. You've got like a 50-50 chance of getting it right. So I should be able to close this siren up here. Now that's done, we're going to swing around to the door contact here. Strip 
these one side of this has to have a resistor on it for the, the zone to stay happy even though there's something wrong with this system I like the programming something's wrong with it where it doesn't seem to care if you don't have a resistor but sometimes I don't know I think I've got something goofed up in the programming probably get that a little bit tighter okay Okay, resistors in there. So if I unscrew these terminals a little bit, we should make a loop with these wires here. So strip this guy long enough to make a loop. Loop it. Strip this guy. Strip the resistor loop it so this can go on one side there the black got a good solid loop connection stick the resistor on the other side there you have it and we just have to mount it somewhere screw in another screw in and then these also have this little cover that can kind of just slip on I've never actually used these things because they usually just seem kind of goofy like this one here, so screw it, I'm not going to use it. We are here on the pliers. If I put that on the door, it puts us at right there. It puts us at right here on the door. So that should line up fairly well with that contact there. Try screwing this on here. Have to see how that closes, so I'm actually gonna have to re watch the camera footage since I can't see. Damn door won't close right there, obviously, won't work if the door won't close, but these things will work even if the magnet's up like three inches away. So if we mount it on the side. this we might have luck with that all right let's try that I'm hoping that'll be all right so for now I'll leave it out here and I think this should be everything done out here other than testing. Now we've got to hook some stuff up at the panel and program it. All right, we're going to try and verify if this speaker works. And the simplest way I have to do that is, I guess I'll put the speaker wire right on the board and see if that does it. Okay, I have the other end of this hooked up to a constant 12 volt, 12 volt power source. It's actually just going into the battery on the security panel. Watch, I can pop the speaker. Anyways, you get the point. Continuity is not an issue. It's got, it's getting to here. It's getting out here just fine. 
Okay, I don't remember what I did, but. Aw, oh, damn it. My point is, is it's working. So, uh, yeah, there we go, I guess. Okay, now I'm gonna see. I've been working on this for about two hours and I'm about to lose my mind. I am, this is pissing me off so much here. I can hear this making sound, but it will not actually put sound out to either speaker now. Like, what a piece of crap this thing is. It's all been figured out. I've killed the voice driver. So, I, a few people had told me that I, it was okay for me to add two speakers on the same siren. I was a little bit skeptical, but I, uh, I just assumed, yeah, surely it'll be fine. No, it's not fine. We blew a $140 voice driver, so that sucks, but, oh well, it's broken now, so what can you do about it? Uh, so I'm going to have to get a new voice driver, so we're, this project just got a lot more expensive, and we're going to have to be okay with just the one siren inside, since apparently one outside is too much. That or that will just have to be a normal siren, and it could be the, the voice one inside here. We'll see, we'll see what I do there. So uh, anyways, we can still program in the door contact. That's what you guys were really asking for anyways too, not a siren, but if Nick yeah. remembers how to do this. Probably not. Okay, here we go, program labels. Zone definitions, isn't that what we go to? So this is zone six, I wired it up to be. Standard fire, no. instant well I think maybe I'm going to name zone six And I went into zone definition, set zone six, which it's all wired right, to generator room, or I set it to instant story, and for labels, I set it to generator room. That's what I called it. Doors wide open, not showing up. I figured it out. I had to add it to our, I had to add it to the partition. Partition one through eight or whatever. So let's try this again with arming it and seeing if it'll go off. I'm gonna stay in here for as long as I can.
until it starts beeping quick, then I'll go and try out the generator one. All right, now I'm not even sure if the siren's connected because one solder joint broke off, so it's just barely on there. There you go, guys. There's your freaking door contact you wanted so bad in the generator room that all of you guys had to tell me about every single day. I got to hear, when are you gonna put a door contact on there? There you freaking go. Sorry. This thing pisses me off. I hate security systems. But I kind of need one. But I hate them, but I need one. Anyways, I still don't know what's going on with like end of line resistors where it seems like it doesn't really care if there's an end of line resistors but I have the option for end of line resistors on, so I have no idea. Anyways, guys, I'm just happy I can finally end this video. Um, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Put any comments or questions down in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching.